Rohit Srivastav is uh, joining in. Uh, Rohit, uh, good morning. Uh, good to have you with us here. Uh, we've got uh, Sanjeev Basin joining in uh, as well from Kolkata, not Delhi. Gentlemen, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Rohit, uh, any any uh, firm view on a firm direction on the Nifty? Well, the firm view is it should head up from here. Okay. So what was yesterday? <laughs> Yesterday was uh, getting the weak hands out of the system. I think nothing more than that. Uh, if you just look at the low that we made in uh, uh, in September when the rate uh, cut took place, which was at around 7690, we've essentially not been able to go below that. We hit 7714 day before. Uh, we fell yesterday, but we did not really fall below the 7714 low. So my sense is as long as you're staying above 7690, you're probably going to head back up. Uh, and uh, while right now it may be easy to say, you know, you can go to 8,000, 8,100 because most people would be looking only at this expiration and the heavy call writing there. Uh, but taking a slightly uh, uh, larger view, uh, the market is actually quite oversold. That is number one. Uh, it's probably as oversold as it was in September now. And uh, the second thing is that uh, the fall has been mostly in the index, which is the Nifty. It has not been across the board uh, in uh, okay. mid cap stocks. Wait, you know, I'm going to come right of... there. I'm going to pick up from that point where you, where you said that the market okay. uh, is quite oversold, but the market is open, so I just need to kind of read out the prices. 50, uh, 52 points on the Nifty, 170 points on the Sensex is what we have so far. Uh, so this is the start. Adani Port half a percent, Sun Pharma half a percent, BHEL higher, ONGC higher, Cane India. Cane India is up a, about three and three quarters of a percent, 139.5. ONGC is up 0 0.65. Uh, I think I'm being told that Gale is in the red and it's the only nifty stocks which is in the red. Gale, by the way, has gained 10% in the last four days. Uh, after losing almost 10% in the four days prior. So, uh, a gale, actually there are two stocks in the market which have seen pretty substantial moves in the last four or five days. One is gale, the other is Infosys. Infosys has lost about 11% in the last six or seven days actually. So, we'll put that up as well in a bit. Uh, Asian Paints is up 1%, Infi is up 1%, 10 rupee, 10 and a half rupee, 1030 on the name. Dr. Redis is up half a percent, Maruti is up one and a half, TCS is up half a percent, Ambuja is up half a percent. Uh, you got Dr. Redis which is higher still nifty uh, 50 on the nifty right now 7783 is where we are hdfc uh, limited is up 0 0.6 tech mahindra is up one percent lupin is up three quarters indecent bank is up about uh, a third of a percent mahindra and mahindra uh, is uh, flattish slightly lower ultra tech is up half a percent 2748 or so I say say bank is up uh, about one one and a quarter, two sixty three and a half. Kane is up three and a half percent, one thirty nine point five. Uh, Vedanta one and a half higher. Hindalco one and a quarter higher. Axis Bank half a percent. SBI one percent. Infosys one percent. Tata Motors zero point six percent. And so it uh, runs. I mean, this is how we are starting uh, this morning. Uh, which is not bad. I mean, I guess uh, in line with what the SGX, a little better actually than what the SGX was indicating early on. Amtec Auto is up about 7 and 7.8 percent. There's news flow there, 46.4 on Amtec. Uh, Coal India was higher. It's coming, kind of coming back to being flat now. Yes Bank is up 1 percent. Uh, Religay, there's news that Religay might be uh, looking to sell its asset management business two and a half higher, 27, 281.5. Uh, HDFC Limited, Eros Media. So results came out and uh, we sort of looked at that stock uh, up uh, at about 222, uh, was up was a higher yesterday as well. Uh, Bharti is up three quarters. Let's look at Idea as well. Idea was up about three and a half percent in a extremely weak market yesterday. Uh, NTPC down 0 0.19. LNT is up a little bit, 1%, 13.56. Uh, and I think some of the sugar stocks are seeing some correction. Balrampur. Uh, Bajaj, I think Sri Renuka, Sri Renuka was lower yesterday as well and uh, more names there which you've seen uh, you know in some cases 30 to 50 percent rallies uh, very quickly. Ambuja cement is up half a percent, lever is up about a third of a percent. Uh, so you'll find the most active stocks on the screen on air uh, right now both volume price wise so stick to the screen here. Uh, Rohit, so just to come back you said markets are quite oversold, markets should head high, just I interrupted you there for the open. Please continue. Yeah, uh, so they are oversold, uh, as oversold as they were in the uh, month of September. Uh, 
uh, when we look at you know uh, simple indicators like uh, the put call ratio, uh, we look at the RSI. It has uh, today if it, if the market stays positive, we'll have a second uh, positive divergence. So these are all short term measures. Uh, uh, another one is that you know if you just look at the way the market has fallen off in the last uh, three weeks, it's essentially been mostly in the index or in the Nifty. Uh, so the weakest segment has been the Nifty itself. When you compare it with the mid caps or small cap indices, uh, the relative strength is actually been positive which means that those those stocks or those sectors have actually fallen much less uh, than the nifty itself which is not what typically happens uh, when you make a meaningful top you know so to me this this sell off that we've seen over the last couple of weeks is more uh, part of you know an up down uh, uh, corrective uh, market that uh, continues to develop and because we are oversold the chances are that we'll probably rebound from here and uh, i was saying that you know while uh, you know people would normally expect only 8000 to 8, 1100 I wouldn't rule out the possibility that it will overshoot uh, most expectations or the upside till it's uh, uh, overbought again uh, before we really uh, get a meaningful top uh, for the market so uh, you should not be positioned at my sense is on the sell side you need to look at the upside uh, we've seen last couple of days the market open up and then sell off essentially on uh, continued selling by maybe FIIs uh, because that's been the main negative number every day. Uh, but if you just look at the reported uh, FII positions in the market, uh, they are as uh, hedged on the put side as they have been at every uh, uh, near term bottom in the last couple of uh, months or rather the most of the last year. That's been a data point. And uh, they were long in the futures market up to almost 3 lakh contracts uh, two months ago. Uh, as of yesterday that turned negative which means they unwound all their longs and are marginally uh, negative which again uh, on many occasions almost 5 occasions in the last 12 months turned out to be uh, a bullish signal. So essentially they have been as negative and unwound everything uh, scared of something uh, but that's normally the bottom if they have sold everything there is nothing more to sell there unless they want to really go short on the market. So my sense is uh, we are at a level from where you are going to get upside another trading rally uh, which can be a little bigger than what uh, we might anticipate to start with. All right, fair enough. Uh, uh, Sanjeev, uh, you want to come in? Where do you stand uh, on the market uh, in the direction uh, broadly to start with from here? Yeah, good morning. Well, Prashant, we were of the view that <coughs> October could see that rally of 82, 83. If you recall, on the day the RBI met, we, uh, we put our neck out and told you 82, 100 is coming. Now, from 82, 100, we've turned extremely bearish. We think 7,500 is definitely on the cards and we don't change our view. We think uh, a retest of uh, the September lows is on the cards and uh, who knows by the end of the year, you could be headed lower. So, 82, 100 for us is a top for the, uh, for the calendar year 2016. We don't even see you going beyond that and on the other hand any rally should be used to exit. So for us uh, this market is a sell on rallies market, 7500 is a matter of time whether today on the afternoon or maybe the next few days, definitely that is on the card. So for us like we said, it's a sell on rallies market. Sell the rallies market. Uh, Sanjeev, in a way that is also the, uh, actually it's kind of tough to say uh, Rohit, you want to weigh in on that? What is the consensus? Is it is there a consensus at this point? Sell the rally or buy the dips, or it's it's I mean it's quite mixed out there. Very very divided. Uh, it depends who you are speaking to. Uh, uh, it could be mixed uh, among uh, you know people who are uh, trading and investing uh, uh, simply because uh, some people are discounting. Uh, different different things maybe some are looking at you know well what will happen if the rate hike comes in or there were people you know if, if you spoke to two months ago who would have said well the second half of this year is going to be better than the first half and so the worst is over you know uh, but because this rally suddenly terminated at 80 to 8300 it's starting to look as bearish as hell uh, but what I'm trying to say here is uh, uh, is see I, I don't have a change in my macro view I don't think you're in a bull market so I, I, I think you're in a bear market anyway uh, for the last eight months and for the next one year uh, but that said uh, we are in a trading market you're going to move 800 points this way 800 points that way and you need to look at indicators to tell you uh, which side are you going to head to so uh, so are you going to 75 500 or lower sure you will but I'm just saying that you're not going there today uh, because uh, a lot of my technical
technical indicators, the ones I'm watching are all oversold. They're telling me that you're not going to fall too much from here. Uh, and if you have to go to 7500, it's possible that you might be at 8200. If you're really surprised, you might be at 8500 before you go to 7500. And you need to be mentally prepared for those kind of moves. Uh, and uh, right now, I don't think there's too much downside. Okay, all right. Uh, wh what would you? Okay, let's just put up Dr. Reddy's and let's put the flash out as well. So this is uh, I'll just some context is required here. Uh, a firm called uh, London Law PLC has announced that it is investigating claims against Dr. Reddy's laboratories concerning possible violations of federal securities law. The investigation is related to allegations that certain statements issued by Dr. Reddy's were false and misleading concerning the f a company's financial performance. On November 6, 2015, okay, this is a class action suit, uh, and uh, so this is a this is a this is something. This is it's a release by a law firm. Uh, and they are they're saying that if uh, people want to join the class action lose, uh, lawsuit in the US, please contact so and so. Anyway, let me just go on with the release. On November 6, 2015, the company announced that it, it received a warning letter from the US FDA uh, over inadequate quality control procedures at three manufacturing plants in India. No class has been certified in the above action. Uh, until a class is certified, you are not considered represented by an attorney. Uh, you may also choose to do nothing and be an absent class member. Uh, okay, I mean, I think we need more details. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not sure uh, what the lawsuit is about. So we'll try and either speak to Dr. Reddy's or we should be speaking with these uh, 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 London fellows. Uh, so we've got a telephone number here. Maybe we should try and uh, get in touch with them. So that in a bit, the stock is correcting, I guess. So two and a half odd percent lower on Dr. Reddy's. Uh, three two seven six three two seven seven is where DRL uh, is at this point. Uh, so I think uh, that's uh, that's what that's what you've got to uh, look at at this point in time. I'm just, I mean, the release in what I read at least to me doesn't make full sense I mean what is the issue really I don't think that's clear here uh, so I think we'll come back when we've got more details on this one the stock is let's just put the stock up at the bottom of the screen so keep an eye uh, on it and move on Rohit I was coming to you what, what do you make so what should one do with, if, with that kind of a view right now with the uh, with the view that the market will move up from here well, uh, you need to be on the long side. Uh, my sense is uh, uh, keeping 76.90 as my uh, key support level. I would build uh, long positions into stocks that have been holding out against the market and uh, look at uh, potential uh, uh, you know, turnarounds also in stocks that have been extremely weak. So look for both type of cases. Uh, it's easier to first spot uh, the strength uh, in particular stocks that have been there. And the index itself is an easier play because if I just look at the last uh, one, one and a half month, Stocks were actually the hard place to be, you know. It was easy to call the index move from 7500 to 8200, uh, but harder in stocks because some of them continued to fall against the market and so on. So, uh, in a trading market, you're probably easier off with an index than with uh, with stocks. But uh, depending on your strategy, you could look at one or the either. And uh, uh, I guess it could last for a couple of weeks, maybe. So at least one to two weeks is the minimum time frame I'll give it. Uh, I don't know whether it can take more, uh, but at least that much. Uh, for the upside uh, that you could actually trade into. No, so you're saying uh, stick with stick with stocks or stick with the index, Rohit. I'm saying uh, the index is a better option uh, than stocks, uh, but I am seeing a lot of risk rewards that are really good in stocks as well. So uh, I, I would look at a bit of both. Uh, we, I mean, we manage two separate portfolios: one for the index, one for stocks. So we do both of that. Uh, but like I said, that. The last one month was a little treacherous on the stock side and it was easier on the index side. So uh, if you find uh, a stocks to be treacherous, then probably just stick with the index. Uh, but I think uh, there are good uh, risk rewards to stocks as well. Yeah, no, fair enough. W w you said many stocks have got favorable good risk rewards as well. W would you want to name uh, what you have in mind? 
Although you're saying that it's better yeah, to trade go along the yeah. index, but yeah. anyway, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what I was saying is look at strength. So uh, apart from the weak ones that you can also identify, strength is where stocks have not fallen with the market. So look at Mahindra and Mahindra. Uh, it has not fallen. It's actually been moving up for the last couple of days. Uh, Reliance Industries, that's the second one. Uh, and all of them, I don't know, it could be 4 to 5 percent, maybe 8 percent upside from here. Uh, something in that region. But essentially these are stocks that have not fallen with the market. Reliance would be second uh, that is actually held out. ITC has been moving up uh, against the market uh, for maybe a week or two now. Uh, so that's another area uh, of strength uh, that we actually uh, found. Uh, among banking stocks, SBI actually held out. It didn't fall so much with uh, like the rest of the PSU banks or even like Access did where it almost tested the previous low. SBI actually didn't fall below the 61% retracement uh, some time back. Uh, so my sense is uh, SBI could also uh, look up a bit from here. Uh, see, so these are a handful of uh, you know index stocks uh, that are holding out uh, better than uh, what the market uh, uh, itself has done. RIL, ITC, uh, SBI, right? Mahindra and Mahindra. MNM. Yeah, I started with MNM, RIL, ITC, and SBI. All right, fair enough. Sanjeev, what would you do? You got a completely opposite view. You're saying 7500 is coming. Uh, how should one act on that? Well, uh, we are selling weakness and buying strength, the whole IT pack, all the private banks. So, wherever there is an opportunity, we are shorting. In fact, yesterday we booked good profit on a lot of the shorts and mainly in the PSU, mainly in the private sector bank, Axis, ICICI, Yes Bank, Infosys, TCS, Tech Mahindra. Uh, you can name uh, a whole host. I can give you 20 names on the short side rather than three on the buy side. So, like I said, you know, it's a, it's going to be a one-off maybe today, maybe the second half of the day, you'll again see a return of uh, the, the trend is clear, uh, Prashant. It's been an outperformance on the mid cap because of the buying by the local institutions and the retail investors, which have bought a lot of the mid caps and are not focusing on large caps. And the selling is in EDFs and uh, predominantly emerging market baskets, where you are seeing a sell off in most of those asset classes and money returning to the US, uh, Japan, and uh, Germany. So for us, this any rally, any anything to do with the Fed tightening, in fact, uh, it would be taken negatively on the currency also. So for us, uh, like we said, uh, 7200 will give us comfort of returning to be as buyers and that could be a prolonged uh, sell-off. So the, we are seeing consolidation for the next three to six months and we don't see 82, 8300 being taken out at least in the next three months. Okay, it, uh, you don't see 82, 8300 being taken out. Uh, oh, you want to name a few stocks which you think are, you said you could Run me through a long list, 20 names, where one can sh go short. A uh, name a few names. Well, to start with, Infosys, which is already down 10%, you could see another 5-7% being shaved off. TCS is one of the weakest in the tech basket. Tech Mahindra. Oh, no, all this means on timing, Prashant. We've been short from 80 to 50. So, so our uh, people who've been no, following I'm us saying, or our, uh, our clients... Yeah, no, I'm saying uh, somebody yeah. watching you now uh, and coming uh, and uh, being new to the view, uh, for them, what makes sense? I mean, not what you already shot and where maybe the risk reward well, is already... Well, yeah. The bank nifty, Prashant, the bank nifty below 16,800 yesterday entered, re-entered a bear market. So whatever the context being of uh, maybe a slight bit of outperformance on the PSU banks, the private sector banks are seeing exit on any rally. In fact, uh, Axis, Yes and ICICI would be my top sells. And like I said, it's the bank nifty. If it uh, tends to stay another day below 16,800, you could get almost a thousand points on the bank nifty. So, so that is a large constituent. The pullback in metals has been short-lived. Tata Steel, Vedanta, you could, uh, you know, take a whole host of those basket stocks. Again, those are shorting candidates. DLF is broken down below 110. Keeping a stop loss of 114, you could short that. So I can give you a lot of, uh, you know, ideas, but like I said, you know, we'd wait for this pullback because of a one-off of the Dow reacting positively. And uh, we'd again uh, look for slightly higher levels to short the market. We, we did uh, advise most to book profits yesterday. And again, we look for any rally to be selling into it. Fair enough. Uh, thanks very much.
uh, for joining us, both of you, Rohit and uh, Sanjeev, appreciate you joining in. Uh, and uh, we'd love to get more uh, from you the next time when you're on. Completely opposite views, but uh, uh, you know that's how the market is. That's what make the makes the market, I guess. Different views. Let's just take a very quick break.